Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey, guys. This is my season review of Supernatural Season 6. The season that, well, until Season 12 came around, was regarded as one of the worst, with Season 7 being the super worst. You disrespect yourself. This is the season that had the very, very, very difficult task of following up from season five being the best season the show ever produced. It already is going in with a handicap. Even with some of the shortcomings that this season does have, it tries. It just takes a bit to get really going. It starts off with probably the worst season opener, I think, in the show's history, at least as far as I can remember. It's just so bland and boring and uninteresting and lacking in any kind of want to make you intrigued with anything that's going on. And then you slowly get introduced into the multitude of storylines that they are trying to choose. The monsters coming together with Grandpa Campbell and Soulless Sam trying to find all of these alphas for Crowley, all in the hope to try and find the door to purgatory, which eventually connects to Cassiel's participation in the story, being his battle for heaven against Raphael. And it turns out that Castiel needs souls to beat Raphael, ergo the door to purgatory. And because of all these actions, the mother of all appears and then disappears very shortly afterwards to try and combat against Crowley. And she's just kind of pissed with what they're doing, so they want to blow up the world. Season six takes a long time to get going. The first half of it is quite messy. It's very directionless. You don't care for a lot of the storyline elements that are going on. First half is held up purely by the humor from Solus Sam and the lengths that this fucker will go to to do weird ass shit. Do you like to play with your food? Once they eventually do solve it through the mid-season finale and the episode before it, which is actually pretty good, I do like the Caged Heat episode. It's definitely one of my top five. And then Appointment with Samara being the episode where Dean gets to be death for a day. Death then in turn puts Sam's soul back in him. That's when the season actually does turn around and it starts to really delve into some decent alternate worlds, some really cool, funny storylines. The funniest episode, at least one of the funniest episodes that the show ever produced being The French Mistake happens in this season. We've got the Frontierland, which is also another kind of alternative story. We have My Heart Will Go On, where Balthazar went back in time and saved the Titanic. It was an attempt to try and get the souls for Castiel's war, but it also turned into an alternate storyline with some Final Destination. Oh, we also had some Star Trek alumni. We had freaking Freddy Krueger in this season. The second half of this season really does bring it back up. It still actually does, at least in my rating system, have a lower rating than that of season one. Season one finished off with a 69%. Nice. This one ends with a 65 percentage. That was definitely saved by the latter half. Second half isn't without its own bad episodes. The worst episode of this season, hell, I think the worst episode of the last six seasons, being Mannequin 3, somehow the most useless fucking episode that this show ever produced. It has story elements, but it doesn't. It's a Monster of the Week episode, but it's not. It's fucking garbage. It's the worst episode of this season by far, and so that dips them quite a bit. We also conclude the storyline aspect about Dean that no one gave a fuck about, being Lisa and Ben. With Sure, it's a bit of a sad sacrifice that Dean makes, but you also don't give a crap because Dean is the j biggest douchebag in this season. I really did not like his character. Selfish, he's whiny, he's hypocritical. Now these are things admittedly that Dean has always been, but he is really digging into these aspects that you don't like about him. He's near on insufferable. I am hoping that changes. I think it does change once he goes to purgatory at least. So overall, season six is definitely given a lot more flack than it should receive. It just so happened to come after the best season this show ever had. Unfortunately, it has to take that bullet. But thankfully, it does have a lot more to it than 
at least I even I remembered. It's just really fucking rough to get into because of how boring it starts off as. And it does have a little bit more lore in the background, especially with the alphas and whatnot. As we're going forward, make sure to keep an eye out in terms of the alpha business. Something that someone brought up to me that is, if an alpha dies, that would mean that the entire race dies supposedly but then that kind of is kind of broken because if you would have that idea wouldn't the mother dying wouldn't then all of the other monsters die well something else that this season does have a very uh, lacking feature is that this villain that they built up to be quite mm, like i thought that if there was anything that could kind of follow up lucifer as another big bad the mother of all monsters is a pretty good replacement but then they just kill her quite quickly. Sure, it was interesting that it didn't happen in the season finale, and there is a different storyline with Castiel's betrayal and the breaking of the friendship of freedom. It does kind of come at an unfortunate point, especially when we were only just slowly starting to get invested in this element of the story. So, my overall rating for season 6 is going to be a 4 out of 7. It is not without issue, but it is also not a crap fest like many remember it to be. It's just okay. It has good parts, it has bad parts, but it's solid with what it's trying to be. And it has at least two 7 out of 7s from me. I didn't think I was going to give any in this season, so definitely got to give credit where credit's due. But those are my thoughts about the season. What do you guys have to say? Let's see what you guys have to say about this season. Really anticipating your top best and worst episodes for a ranking for the season. I feel like season six, more than maybe any other season, is extremely obvious about which episodes they actually put love and thought into and which ones it makes it plainly obvious they were just trying to milk a dead cow. The contrast is honestly very jarring to me. I can agree with this statement quite well, Stoneheart. I think you're pretty much dead on. There are some really good episodes in this season, but there are some that also really suck. And there's just some that just kind of like, whatever. The first time I watched season six, I remember being really disappointed. I knew that season five was supposed to be the last, but I was open to the idea of the show continuing because at this point there was enough lore in the Bible to be explore and expand. I wanted to see less epic, but still good storylines of biblical lore, like the God Tablets or Abel and Cain. And I got that in Jeremy Carver's era. Unfortunately, Sarah Gamble didn't want that. I know I keep hammering it, but it's so true. She hated demons and angels. All she wanted was weird monsters and commentary about the human behavior. This is even more evident in the next season where she completely ditches Castiel. Here it shows the most when she is trying to make a villain as lame as Eve come off as a more powerful than the angels and I never buy it, not even for a second. In general, the characters and monsters she was pushing for the, for the most for the audience, like the Campbells, Lisa, and Ben, those are the characters I hated the most. However, whenever Sarah did what she did best at Supernatural, aka making one-off episodes like French Mistake and Frontierland, the, ep the season becomes freaking great. In fact, I had always liked what I always liked about season 6 with the episodes that weren't connected to the weird mother of all plotline. After experiencing the abomination that was the dab error, I came to appreciate season 6 for what it was. Don't get me wrong, it's not a good season. I, in fact, would rate it 4 out of 10 or 40% of this season, is, but 40% of the season is solid. Season 6 is like the Batman Forever is supernatural, and I mean that in the best way. It's not the worst, but it's certainly lighter in tone and not entirely as epic as what came before. But like Batman Forever or Terminator 3, I came to appreciate this season for what it is. A fun, cheesy time that keeps you interested enough to continue watching the show. Side note, there's a season, there's an episode in season 8 that completely disintegrates the main purgatory plotline between Castiel and Crowley. Keep that in mind when I point it out in season 8 because I don't think people have realized that retcon and no one is talking about it. Yes, no, there is a definite distinction between the episodes that are like good one-offs. Now, admittedly, before I rewatched the season, I had slightly changed my opinion about this season after watching the Dab era. I have not rewatched this entire season in full. This was the first time I have done it since I watched it all as it aired, but Rewatching while well, we were watching the dab era, I was thinking maybe I was too harsh on season six, and I kind of came to realize that that was true. Season six for me has always been best described as a slow burn. To me, it always gets better upon rewatch. The first half is where Jared Padalecki shines through. It's a bumpy reboot of Sam and Dean getting back together, hunting monsters, and not dealing with a global threat being pr thrust upon their shoulders. I love the mystery element of everyone distrusting each other, and I still love Dean's relationship with Ben and Lisa, regardless of the punchline. I am for it. 
the saving grace of this first half of the season was always will always be the introduction of the alpha monsters the second half is the naturally the strongest where we get to the meat of the answers being revealed of the what the chess game is really going on or while sam and dean are caught in the crossfire i love the progression of season five that it all comes down to a desperate angel that is power driven to proclaim godhood not to let the events of season one to five reoccur at it at its roots it's the intelligent for the show to have that that angel be castiel and how his portrayal deeply affects sam and dean emotionally and physically eric kripke may have stepped down as executive producer and took a gamble to make sarah the showrunner but i personally feel that she d was happy to deliver the first time I, re we, I watched it, it felt jarring, but that's to be expected with new changes to writers and as a new showrunner. Thankfully, the hate has cooled down for the most part because it's a perfect segue for me into the events of Season 7. I will say, yeah, Sarah Gamble was probably the only person I would have thought of that to continue on the legacy of the show. And as I said for the other comment, yeah, I think that this season gets a lot more hate than it deserves because there are some really good episodes in it. Season 7, we'll see. To me, season six, even though it has its problems, the season is still decent, unlike the dab era of the show. I do get that Sarah Gamble wanted to try something different for the show. And you know what? You can try something different and maybe not all of it fails, but the fact that not all of it did, there were still some really great ideas in here, that should be commended. Thank you for reading my comment in the video. You're making a great contribution to Supernatural. I respect that. And of course, I mean a worthy contribution to the fandom, not the Destiel fans contr contribute. Oh god, that must be forgotten. Well, thank you. I'm happy I'm not on that same level. But thank you for enjoying the video. I hope you enjoy the others, because we got season 7, 8, 9, and 10 to continue and finish. Even so, I haven't rewatched season 6 of Supernatural in a really long time, and only for my opinion based on your reviews, Jeremy, I have to say that there are quite a few things that worked in this season, although there are some major disappointments. The major problem with this season to me is that it's way too overstuffed. You have Soulless Sam plotline, Alpha Monsters, Mother of All plotline, Angel Civil War between Cass and Raphael plotline, and the Search for Purgatory plotline. This is way too much for one season. I think season 6 wouldn't have been a mess if you had cut out some stuff out and use that for next season or in seasons. A story about Solus Sam alone could have easily carried the season in my opinion. I give the season 6 of Supernatural 5 out of 10 or 4 out of 7. It's not good, but it's not bad. It's just pretty, mo pretty mediocre. I don't think that Solus Sam could have held the whole season. You needed a little bit more meat for that because it's a little bit of a personal story. You need something kind of an overarching story to be, keep going on, but yes, it definitely is overstuffed. If anything, you could have had the Angel Civil War, but the problem is that sounded boring in concept but upon final execution it was actually pretty cool and then you had the mother of all and the alpha monsters plot line which sounded cool in concept but boring in execution so you kind of have the the good and the bad of both one major complaint i have about this season is the wasted characters brought back Gan they brought Gan they brought grandpa back but i had no idea what to do with him they killed rufus off in a pretty underwhelming way i kind of Disagree with that, but I can understand why people would be upset about it. Bobby's ex that had an interesting background. I actually would have liked to see her a little bit more as well, and so on. Real shame these characters could have had it been interesting, but they were wasted in, in this bipolar season. I will admit that this season does kill off a lot of people, and I forgot about that upon rewatch. It's clear that the Supernatural team didn't know what they were doing with the first half of the season. They threw a lot of stories at the wall, hoping one would stick. Just like us, they realized that most of them weren't working, and they solved it by literally killing off these storylines. It's not all bad, what every cast and crew loves to hear. Weekend at Bobby's and Appointment in Samara are standouts, and Balthazar is one of the great Supernatural characters, but on the whole, it's a very plot-heavy, head-scratching slog. The turnout for the season was the, f the turnaround for the season was the French mistake. They got their act together, figured out the best storylines, Soulless Sam and Cass's War, and gave them focus they needed, to make the remaining episodes more cohesive, interesting, and interesting, entertaining. Did they everything work in the second half? No. They killed off Eve way too quickly, had Cass rescued Sam Solo. Nope. Didn't happen. It took a garrison of angels four months to rescue Dean from regular hell, and Cass rescues Sam Solo from the cage against two archangels. Killed Balthazar, and a missed opportunity at the God CL uh, slash Raphael showdown. But like you said in the last video, episodes like the finale with a cliffhanger ending like that are why I continue to watch the show. I always wanted to know what would happen next. Overall, the show had a troubling finding its way in the beginning, but it redeemed itself by the end. And I can actually say that too, because I really do like how the last episode ends, and I would have loved to have seen that storyline be used more with the whole Castiel being the villain aspect, but maybe fan reaction might have swayed it as well as also personal relations with castiel or sorry misha i am mean, gonna do kind of a theory video talking about it and seeing why but mainly based on someone's comment i got a while back 
So season six for me is not actually all that bad. It's a mess at times and they had some not really good episodes, but I liked it as a whole. Jared was great as Solus Sam. He was distinctively different and menacing while leaving the room for humor and flipping the usual dynamic where Sam is a straight man and Dean gets to be funny. And yes, that is true. The flip was actually really, really well done in this season. I really like the look of this season. It was a bit more high def while keeping with the vibe of the earlier stuff and doing more digital stuff as well as just doing it tastefully. One of the worst parts of season seven for me is the jump to super high def cameras. It just makes the show look cheap and kills the cool vibe the early seasons have. The negatives for season six for me are a few horrible episodes, killing Balthazar and easily dispatching Eve. All in all, I did, re I did enjoy rewatching a bunch of the episodes. So as a, as a season, I'll give her a 5.5 out of seven. And that is actually something that you bring up I'm kind of curious to see if I'll notice it as much. I do notice quality a lot more now over the years of watching television and movies. So to see that jump is going to be interesting to me because I thought it happened later on in the show's progression, but I guess we'll find out when we watch the first episode of season seven. I only mentioning this because eventually you'll get to season 10. I won't be giving my thoughts on each episode about how much I detest the Mark of Cain storyline. With that being said, who do you think would win in a, in a fight between Solo Sam and Demon Dean? Demon Dean. For me, it's an unfair comparison. I feel like Demon Dean would easily mop the floor with Solo Sam, which makes a stupid a debate. If there's going to be a comparison of Solo Sam to another Dean, it would be one that is similar to Solo Sam. There's only one thing, one I can think of. I'll give you three hints. You reviewed the episode already. This version killed one of his men because he was suspected he had the Corotone virus, and he purposely led his entire team into an ambush. Which version of Dean am I referring to? Ah, the Dean from the alternate, uh, hist uh, the alternate future from the end from season five. That would have actually been kind of cool to see. Now, admittedly, uh, Demon Dean has powers. He would wipe the floor with Sola Sam. But it is kind of interesting to see the idea of Sola Sam against Dean that has lost all freaking hope and is just whatever doing whatever he can, whatever he needs to, to complete the mission, as he puts it. But anyways, yeah, I, I did enjoy that. No, thank you guys for all your comments. Thank you for these. Were, these were fun to read. All right, guys. There we go. That's it. That's pretty much the end of season six but now you know what's next the best and the worst for those videos i am going to do my ratings and then i'll ask you guys in each video to give me your top five of that category the first will obviously be the worst so once i do that video make sure to give me your top five worst when i do that video not in this one and then obviously with the best following but thank you guys so much if you follow me along for this again i uh right now as of this recording it's january 19th i almost did 10 reviews in one day so i will have definitely had a lot of prepared content to come to you guys at this point i think we should be in august regardless if you are here thank you once again for joining me on this journey i did not think i would finish doing all these recordings this quick but I was sick and so I thought you know what what better to do than get this ball rolling so I can start moving on to season seven maybe right now I have to edit all of these and prep them as much as I can before I start doing my reviews for season seven again I just wanted to say thank you guys to everyone who joined along this journey for everyone who came along and just enjoyed watching these reviews and getting in on the discussion. I always enjoy talking about this show with you guys. And now since we are going to be moving into 100%, 100% uncharted territory, well not really uncharted territory, territory I haven't been to in a long, long time, literally since the episodes aired, I have not watched a single episode from season seven to the end of 10 again since their airing. I've watched even a few episodes again of 11 and a few episodes of six. But as always, thank you for watching and I appreciate it. I am very excited to talk about the next seasons with you guys because there's gonna be a lot of lore building once we get into the Jeremy Carver era. But we still have one more Sarah Gamble season and this is the one that was regarded as the worst until dab took over until then if you guys like this video please leave a like it helps out with the algorithm and if you just so happen to come across this subscribe and share the video maybe it helped build the channel and whatnot until then guys i'll see you next week with the top five worst